Greetings to all of you, dear friends. And today I am standing before you on the tips how to improve performance in the upcoming board exam, especially in the subject of chemistry. We know that we lose marks because of silly mistakes, careless mistakes. So, in today's presentation, I will highlight chapter wise which are the important areas and the probable mistakes, the areas where common errors are seen that we will discuss today so that we can minimize errors in the upcoming exam and try to get better marks or highest marks in the exam. So children, let us start the presentation. This is the syllabus for the year 22-23 where 10 chapters are there. In physical chemistry, the weightage is 23 marks. In inorganic chemistry, 14 marks. And in organic chemistry, 33 marks. Then coming to the blueprint, we have uh, five sections, A, B, C, D, E. In section A, we will have 14 questions from MCQ and four questions from assertion reason type. Then section B carries two marks each, seven questions with the two internal choices. Section C, three mark questions where we'll have five questions with two internal choices. Section D is case-based question, where we'll have two questions with one internal choice. And section E, that is five marks question, three questions will be there with two internal choices. And we will have competency-based questions also in the various sections. So we have to prepare accordingly. Coming to time management, we have uh, time distributions for each section. So we can approximately spare 30 minutes for section A, 15 minutes for section B, 40 minutes for section C, 35 minutes for section D and 40 minutes for section E. And that will include 20 to 28 minutes as uh, extra time which we can use for revision. Now let us go for chapter wise discussion of the important areas and the common errors that are possible. First, starting with the physical chemistry, chapter is solution, important areas you can see on the screen. The common errors that is possible in this particular chapter, number one, in the numericals of osmotic pressure, students often forget to use proper units. Example, the pi value, osmotic pressure value should be in atmosphere, temperature should be in Kelvin, volume should be in liter and R value has to be taken as 0 0.0821 liter atmosphere per mole Kelvin. So this is mandatory. So please see that the given values are converted into these respective units. Then coming to the next one is in the definition of osmosis, students often forget the use of the term semi-permeable membrane. Without the use of the term semi-permeable membrane, that definition is considered as incomplete and generally zero mark is awarded. Then students often get confused with the direction of uh, flow of solvent in hypertonic and hypotonic solutions. So that has to be taken care of. And even the students uh, forget that in osmosis, it is the flow of solvent that takes place and not the flow of solute or the solution. In the second chapter, electrochemistry, uh, these are the important areas. Uh, generally, we give more importance to the Nernst equation, numericals of Nernst equation, Kohlrausch's law, then relation between Gibbs energy change, equilibrium constant, and EMF. So those areas need to be given due importance. Coming to the error part, Students often commit mistakes in identifying anode and cathode, so that has to be learned properly. And the Nernst equation is generally written wrong and accordingly the substitution also goes wrong, so that has to be taken care of. Again, students have confusion in the terms like conductance, conductivity, molar conductivity, so definitions and proper equations should be learned. And Again, they make mistake in calculating the number of electrons gained or lost in a redox reaction. So once that number goes wrong, the numerical also goes wrong and you get wrong answers. Coming to chemical kinetics, uh, most important areas are like order and molecularity, rate law and rate constant and numericals related to integrated rate equation, half-life period and activation energy. And the mistakes are generally committed in writing the units of the rate constant 
and often students forget to convert the temperature into Kelvin scale, especially in Arrhenius equation. Then they have confusions in predicting order and molecularity. They get confused in the values of K2 and K1 in Arrhenius equation and normally take wrong coordinates while plotting graphs. So these are the common errors which we see in chemical kinetics. Coming to inorganic chemistry, we have only two chapters. So in the D and F block elements, uh, there are three important areas which must be covered. One is the characteristics of transition metals. Then we have potassium permanganate and potassium dichromate. The preparation, property and structure has to be given due importance. At least the structure should be drawn properly. Then lanthanide contraction and the consequences has to be uh, given due importance. In the error part, uh, whenever we write the electronic configuration of chromium and copper, uh, normally mistakes are found in that. Then second is, uh, when we write the electronic configuration of ions, the removal of electron is uh, shown from the penultimate shell instead of removing them from the valence shell. So that has to be taken care of while writing the electronic configuration of ions. And again, while drawing the geometry or the structure of the permanganate and dichromate ion, drawing the single bond and double bond, that is a mistake committed by the students. So you have to draw it properly and learn how many single and double bonds are there in the KMnO4 and K2Cr207 structure. Coming to the coordination compound, uh, the most important areas are the nomenclature, IUPAC nomenclature, isomerism, then valence bond theory, crystal field theory and there are certain complexes which are often asked in the question paper, uh, nickel tetracyanide, nickel tetrachloride, nickel tetracarbonyl, cobalt hexafluoride, cobalt hexamine. So these ions uh, should be practiced well in terms of hybridization and geometry. Generally, uh, you can have a, a shortcut tip like this. If the coordination number is 4 and if the ligand is weak, the hybridization will be sp3. Uh, if the ligand is strong, the hybridization can be dsp2. If coordination number is 6, the hybridization will be sp3 d2 in case of weak ligand and d2 sp3 in case of strong ligand. This is a general rule, uh, but there are exceptions in that like uh, NiCO4 times there is an exception, it ha happens to be sp3 even though it is uh, uh, it has a strong ligand. Common errors, uh, students often commit mistake in deriving the correct name of IUPAC name of the complex, then they commit mistake in calculation of oxidation state of the central metal atom. Again, they commit mistake in writing the electronic configuration and deriving the correct hybridization when they use VB theory for predicting the geometry of complexes. They draw incorrect geometrical isomers in the case of bidentate ligands and incorrect diagram and incorrect pairing of electron while drawing the crystal field splitting. Uh, in that, let me add one tip there. Uh, when you draw the crystal field splitting diagram, uh, there are two sets of d orbitals, namely T2g and Eg. T2g, in that itself you have three terms and therefore there will be three orbitals in that, dxy, dyz, dxz. Similarly, in Eg, there are only two terms, two letters, so you have only two orbitals in that, dx square minus y square and dz square. Again, second thing is, if it is a tetrahedral field, then the T2G should be on the top and EG should be drawn at the bottom. The connection is like this, for tetrahedral, the first letter is T, hence T2G should be uh, drawn on the top and for octahedral, it should be exactly the opposite. Coming to organic chemistry, I will uh, first request you to learn the correct formula of all the important functional groups and while writing the structure or while writing the formula of the compounds, ensure that the tetracovalency of carbon is followed. This is a big mistake which normally students of class 12 commit. They never take care of the tetracovalency of the carbon atom. Again, organic chemistry has to be considered like a mathematics subject. 
uh, you cannot master organic chemistry by rereading the textbook it has to be practiced by writing written practice is required for organic chemistry don't memorize the reactions instead try to understand the reactions better uh, i often say that organic chemistry is just like a story book where each and every compound is like a character and each character has unique speciality unique feature and if you understand the unique character or feature of the reagent or the reaction then you can easily understand organic chemistry and organic chemistry should be learned from the first page to the last page don't start from a uh, middle of the uh, chapter or middle of the topic it is just like reading a story book if you want to know the complete meaning of the story you have to start from the first and end with the last page so organic chemistry as we have four chapters i will suggest uh, to you suggest you to divide the organic chapters into different areas instead of uh, going for four chapters i will request you to divide that into different areas the first area is iupac nomenclature from all the four chapters you select the different compounds given in the ncert and practice the nomenclature and while writing the name iupac name of the compound follow the order secondary prefix primary prefix word root primary suffix secondary suffix don't jumble them up number 2 after practicing the nomenclature you take all the name reactions from the four chapters and you try to pair them up so when you pair them up you will see some similarities for example you can pair aldol condensation with canizaro reaction they have something common uh, aldol condensation needs an aldehyde with alpha hydrogen whereas canizaro needs an aldehyde with no alpha hydrogen aldol condensation takes place in dilute alkali whereas canizaro takes place in the concentrated alkali the medium is different so how can you remember that in aldol you have d so d stands for dilute and in canizaro you have c which stands for concentrated so you will not get confused while writing the equations again wolf kishner and clemenson reduction both have a common feature that they uh, try to they both convert co carbonyl group to methylene group ch2 group again you can pair reimer tymen and kolb's reaction where you can find some products with some similar names reimer tymen has the final product as salicyl aldehyde and kolb's reaction has salicylic acid so likewise from all the four chapters you try to pair the organic name reactions according to the similarities that you find you can take help of the teachers in this regard after practicing the nomenclature nomenclature and name reactions uh, you can go for the test to distinguish so you can take pair of compounds and learn all the tests that are given in the textbooks and you can practice them accordingly uh, while writing the test to distinguish please see that you are writing some chemical test having some characteristic observation and not the structural differences please do not mention any structural differences in this case it has to be some characteristic observation coming to next part that is reaction mechanism we have sn1 sn2 mechanisms and dehydration of alcohol mechanism for hydration of alkene so only three or four important uh, uh, reaction mechanisms are there which you can write and practice and while practicing them please ensure that you mark the electrons in form of dots and arrows are correctly placed to show the shift of electrons from one part to the other part of the molecule after practicing mechanism you can take all the reasoning questions from the four chapters in general uh, we normally use the concepts of hydrogen bonding to explain boiling point or solubility or we we use uh, inductive effect or resonance effect to explain the acidic basic characters of compounds even stability of compound can be explained on that basis so there are some common terms which we often use in giving reasons uh, for various organic facts similarly uh, coming to the last part of uh, organic that is conversions which normally students uh, have nightmare and here i will suggest one thing uh, as i told you earlier each reagent has a unique nature each reaction has a specific character or some spe special feature will be there so that has to be understood so like if you take acidified kmno4 or dichromate it is generally used for 
uh, strong oxidation so they can be used as strong oxidizing agents copper copper oxide cro3 you can use them as mild oxidizing agent alkaline kmno4 can be used for side chain oxidation concentrated sulfuric acid or phosphorus pentoxide can be used for dehydration uh, lithium aluminium hydride sodium borohydrate can be used for reduction whenever we come across alkenes you can think of sagzevs and markovnikov's rule halo alkanes can be used for preparing almost all the functional groups okay and similarly we have decarboxylation hoffman bromamide reaction which help in reducing the number of carbon atoms so likewise if you focus on the reactions and the reagents you will find something unique in them and that can be understood and then can be applied in conversions common errors uh, number 1 students often don't uh, correlate the branching with the boiling point they have confusions in that then they have confusions in finding out the order of reactivity towards sn1 and sn2 mechanisms they have confusions in identifying a group as electron withdrawing group or electron releasing group they have doubts in writing the formula correct formula of primary secondary tertiary halides alcohols and amines similarly they have confusions they commit mistake in writing the conditions for williamson synthesis and also in finding the products uh, where ethers react with hi similarly they have doubt in or they have confusions in iodoform reaction what kind of compounds give iodoform reaction and again uh, in writing the order correct order of basic nature of primary secondary tertiary amines both in vapor phase as well as aqueous state so the teachers can help you you can just contact your teachers and these areas which are the common areas where mistakes are possible you can discuss with your teachers and you can rectify them then coming to the last chapter that is biomolecules important areas are carbohydrates proteins vitamins nucleic acids and common errors normally uh, students get confused in writing the correct monosaccharides of different disaccharides they have confusions in identifying the nitrogenous bases present in dna and similarly the nature of bonds present in the secondary structure of proteins so that also can be rectified finally uh, let me uh, conclude the presentation it is well said that we should read everything of something and something of everything what i have shown you through this presentation is uh something from the syllabus which are most important so in those areas you should not leave any area unrevised everything is important in that everything should be covered in what i showed you as something and the remaining portion there you should know something of that something of the remaining portion should be known to you do not leave them completely so friends you have come to know chapter wise what are the areas where we normally commit mistake so try your level best to minimize these errors you just focus on these errors contact your teacher meet your teacher get the correct answers rectify it and try to get good marks in your exam so i wish you all the best and thank you for your patience thank you